Hey mate, before you enjoy today's episode, I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about the free 14 day transformation that we are currently running inside of the Unbreakable Man team. Now, if you're a man on the Gold Coast who's serious about improving his physical and mental health, building his self-confidence, and you want to become a part of a team of motivated and like-minded men, then this is the best chance that you are going to get. So as part of the 14 day transformation, you're going to get a personalized meal plan and a recipe cookbook to help you get your diet under control. You're going to be training with myself and the Unbreakable Man team for two whole weeks, and I'll be there by your side, helping you overcome any of the challenges that you will face along the way. If that sounds good, then get in touch with me by emailing me at mitch at unbreakableman.com.au. You can find all of my contact details on the website, which is just www.unbreakableman.com.au. Or you can message me on social media. Instagram is unbreakableman underscore challenge. And Facebook is just unbreakableman. That sounds good to you. Hit me up. I hope to hear from you soon. Back to the episode. What's up, brother? Coach Mitch here. And welcome to this week's episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. Now, today's episode is going to be probably quite a quite a deep episode. And it's one that I've really thought twice, even three times about making because it's on kind of a touchy subject. And, you know, obviously I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I don't want to offend anyone if I can help it. Um, but I do think, look, this, this is a massive problem in, in our world today. And I've seen it over and over again in the almost 10 years I've spent coaching people and the last six years of coaching specifically men. And so look, I wanted to address it and just give my two cents on it. And if you get something out of this episode, then that's awesome. You know, and if you have any information that would help me maybe get a better perspective, by all means, comment down below. I'd love to hear it. I'm open to your perspectives, thoughts, ideas as well on this topic, fellas, um, and even ladies, if you're watching this. So the topic for discussion for today's episode is anxiety and depression. And obviously, with this episode, I would like to hopefully help you if you are dealing with anxiety and depression or have dealt with it in the past or, you know, have experiences with it every now and again. The purpose of this episode is to help, hopefully give you some advice, um, some words that might improve your ability to counter those feelings that you have in your life and hopefully remove them completely. Like that would be the ideal, right? Is for you to not feel this way anymore. Um, or I, I certainly hope that that's, that's your goal if this is something you've had an experience with. And also, by the way, my friend, perhaps you personally don't have that much of an experience with anxiety and depression, but if you have a friend or a close family member or anyone that you think would benefit from listening to this episode, then by all means share this episode with them and, and perhaps they might get something good out of this as well. Now, the first thing I want to say is I'm not a psychologist. You know, I, I don't have a degree on the wall. Everything that I'm going to share with you in this episode is simply just anecdotal uh, information that I've gathered over the last six years of working with hundreds of Gold Coast men on improving their physical and mental fitness and having thousands of conversations uh, around some of these really difficult mental and emotional issues that a lot of people are dealing with right now. You know, it's a, it's a common thing. Firstly, it's a, it's a really common thing. Everyone's experienced something like this at some point. And I think if we can improve our ability to respond to these feelings, then we can reduce the negative impact that they have on our lives. That's, that's all we're trying to do here. So I just want to let you know that I'm just talking from my experience of working with hundreds and hundreds of men and going through this with those men. Um, if, if you get something out of this podcast episode, that's awesome and share it if you really enjoyed it. You know, and, and if this perhaps isn't relevant to you, and your experience with depression and anxiety, then I'm not gonna, I'm not minimizing your experience whatsoever. That's, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. And, and if that's the case, comment down below if you want to add something to what I say in this episode, you know, perhaps 
perhaps your insight might help me improve my ability to help people in the future as well. So I'm totally open to that. So the first thing I want to say is that the, the goal of this episode, right, and hopefully the goal of anyone who has anxiety and depression is to remove the anxiety and depression from our lives. You know, if you're dealing with that, it's obviously not a good thing, right? It sucks. It's going to have a negative impact on every aspect of our lives if we're dealing with something like that. So hopefully the, the goal's got to be to get rid of it. So the first thing that I would say, and we'll dive way deeper as we go into the episode, but just as a kind of foundational thing here, if you have anxiety and depression, then the question is, what are the things that you're currently doing in your life consistently to either get rid of it or minimize it to the best of your ability? So we must be taking some actions consistently to work on these things in our lives that are messing us up. You know, are you taking those steps? Because if we're not taking those steps, then it's, it's always going to be a problem. It's always going to affect us. It's always going to affect the people around us. It's always going to affect our future. It's always going to reduce what we could get out of our lives. And we only get one life, man. So let's make the most of it. So firstly, if that is something that you deal with, hopefully you're doing everything that you can do right now to improve that situation. I just want to start by saying that. So, moving forwards, in my experience, again, I'm not a psychologist, just in my experience, what I've noticed is that most anxiety and depression is situational. Now, even as I say that, I think it's evident that some people are certainly more prone to feeling anxiety or depression. Some people, for, for probably multiple reasons, whether it's genetic or whether it's you know, other things you can't control like your upbringing, some people are more prone to feeling depressed or, or feeling anxious. And, and I think that's absolutely true. So for some people, it, it is going to be more difficult, more challenging for like, your experience is going to be harder than someone like myself who doesn't really have that exact same relationship with those those emotions so i believe that's true and i also think that it's absolutely the case that some people can just have can just be really on one end of that spectrum in terms of genetic variation and and who do have who do have a clinical level of depression or anxiety where it is a matter of the brain is actually just not functioning as as it should right? And, and this is the result of that. But I believe, I also do believe that that is the minority of people experiencing anxiety and depression today. And I think that most of it is situational. Like if you're in a really crappy situation in your life, of course you're going to feel depressed. You know, if, if, you're, if you're working a job that you don't like, you know, your marriage is falling apart, your kids don't want to hang out with you, you haven't got a lot of friends, mate, anyone would feel depressed in that situation. That's a tough situation to be in. And it's difficult to see the light when you're going through something like that. You know, I've, and I've, I've had conversations with men and some of the stuff, and, and they tell me what they're going through. And I'm like, I'm not surprised you feel the way you feel, mate. I'm not surprised you're so down. I'm not surprised you're depressed. Of course you would be. If anyone was going through that, they probably feel the same way that you're feeling right now because it's a tough situation. So with that in mind, then the only way that I think a lot of us can really, can really combat that feeling of anxiety and depression is by working on those situations in our lives that cause us to feel that way. And I think that we, we do know that and, you know, that's why we would go to see psychologists and psychiatrists and stuff to make these things, um, to make ourselves, make ourselves more aware of these things and start to take steps on changing them. But I think we could probably put more emphasis on that as a society and, and certainly as a community and certainly within our families and our, our groups of friends as well. 
is that those, these feelings are never going to go away if the root cause of the feeling is still a part of your life. Whether that root cause is something that's happening right now or something that's happened in the past that's still affecting you today. But in order to remove this feeling from your life, remember that's got to be the goal, right? Surely if you're feeling depressed or you're feeling anxious, surely the goal is to, to not have to feel this way anymore. So then the only solution that I can see, you know, if you, if you have any other solutions, comment down below. But the only solution I can see is to address the root cause of the issue. The thing that creates the circumstances that that make us feel depressed or anxious. And that's not that easy to figure that out either, by the way. You know, because the fact that you might be working a job you don't like and your marriage might be falling apart, those two things may be symptoms of something even deeper than that, which may be that, you know, from the earliest age you can remember, you, you lacked confidence or you had low self-esteem or, you know, whatever the underlying issue may be. But if you're not willing to go down to that level to, to, to find out what that thing is, then it's always going to be something that you have to deal with. That those feelings are always going to come up for you and you're never really going to know where they're coming from or how to remove them from your life. So I really do think that most people who are dealing with depression and anxiety, most people, not everybody, but most people, comes from either a situation they're currently going through and it's just really tough, or kind of delayed feelings of low self-worth or whatever it might be from something that's happened to them ages ago and it's unresolved for all these years. So we've got to, go, we've got to be willing to go to that place. It's not easy, but once again, if you want to get this out of your life, you've got to fix the situation that's causing it. And one thing I wanted to add on to that as well is is the, the debate around antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication. Here's just my thoughts on it, okay? Firstly, I'm not, I'm not against using medication to treat these, these emotions, right? But one thing I do think is important to remember is that for most people, again, the people whose anxiety and depression is caused by a situation or by some past trauma that's unresolved, that medication is not ever gonna fix the problem. It's a band-aid over the symptoms that, uh, that the problem is causing. You know, the, the days where you're, you're feeling so down that you're bedridden and you just can't get out of bed, you know, the medication is enough to help you function throughout the day. And that's a good thing, right? Like we need to be able to do that. However, it's not solving anything because you always have to keep taking it to, to just function within your life. So the way that I view medication, and if you're on something like that, this is, this is just my thoughts around it. Comment down below if you have any other thoughts, is that the medication is a tool, right? It's a tool that you can use to help bring that level of depression or anxiety down low enough so that you can function and take those steps that, that we may need to take to solve whatever that root issue is. That, that's kind of my, my opinion on medication, is that it's absolutely necessary just to get us moving sometimes, but it's not the cure. And like, you don't want to be on that for your whole life. You know, for me, it seems... It seems wrong to, to tell people that it's, that it's okay. Like, look, you might need it, but I don't think it's okay. You know, like, it's, it's not okay to have anxiety or depression. And that's not me saying that, that there's anything, like, bad about you because of that. I'm saying that it's not okay. I don't want you to have anxiety or depression. It's not okay. I don't want you to accept that in your life. You might have it right now, and you, and you know we, sometimes we have to accept circumstances we're not happy with right now, but it's not okay. It's shit. It sucks. I don't want that for you. I want you to have a better life. I want you to overcome this thing so you can be the, the man that you want to be, and not just for you, but for the people around you. 
so that you can cut this thing off now and you don't end up passing this on to anybody else because now you can help other people move through this as well. You know, so I don't think, it, for me it feels wrong to say that it's okay to be on medication for the rest of your life. Now you may need to use it intermittently from time to time to help you function enough to, so that you can do the things that you need to do to get yourself out of those, those moments. And those moments, I, I'm aware that those moments can last weeks, months, maybe even a year. But if all throughout that time you're also taking even just the most basic steps to improve the way that you're feeling and combat some of, the, some of those negative aspects of, of your anxiety or depression, then guaranteed you're gonna come out of this so much better than the, the people who don't. And perhaps even some of your past experiences with it. So that's just my thoughts on medication. Absolutely use it to help you function enough to do the things that you need to do to not have to feel this way anymore. You know, even if it's just to function enough just to go about your day to day, that's absolutely fine. But just remember that it's not actually solving the problem, it's just, it's just a band-aid over the symptoms of the problem. And if we really wanna get rid of this anxiety and depression in our lives, then we have to find out what is the cause of it and address that cause. Now, <clears throat> some of the, this is, okay, here's, here's just some advice from me. Yeah, once again, not a psychologist, so take it with a grain of salt. This is just from my experience and from having lots of conversations. If you like this, great. If you don't like it, I understand. Comment down below if you want to add anything to this. So advice on how you could improve this situation for yourself. The first thing that I think is, is important, and I notice this a lot with, with the people that I speak to who who have anxiety and depression, is that it almost forms a part of their identity. And I think we've gotta be careful with the language that we use around these things because I don't want you, I don't think anyone really should take ownership of this thing called depression or anxiety, like it's a part of them. You know, if you say, my anxiety, then it's like it's it's a it's a, a piece of the of the pie that is you and that and that piece can't be removed and and so you're you're kind of holding on to this thing that is not helping you and 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 that you would obviously like to not hold on to but even just the perhaps the language that's used around it where you talk about my depression my anxiety mate don't pick this thing up you maybe are, maybe you're feeling depressed and, and you might say, I'm feeling depressed today, but that's different from saying my depression is kicking in today. Like it's, it's internal within you, it cannot be removed, it's a part of who you are. Whereas just saying I'm feeling depressed today, like this thing is over me today or this thing is within me constantly and today it's coming out. And it's just simple little things like that. I noticed that when I speak to people who talk to me about their anxiety and depression, I'm just like, man, it's not your anxiety. Don't take ownership of this thing. You just feel, you're feeling anxious or you're feeling more anxious than usual. But do you want to take ownership of this thing? And that's just, look, that's just um, something that I've noticed. So if you're someone who suffers from anxiety and depression, I'd be, interesting to, I'd be interested to hear what you think of that observation. You know, am I... Am I talking out my ass here? Is that, is that unfair of me to say? If it is, comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinion on it as someone who's, who's experiencing it firsthand. Help me out with this one if, if you think that that is unfair of me to say. Um, and even if you don't think it's unfair of me to say, but perhaps there's some perspective on it that I haven't quite grasped, then comment down below. Once again, I'd love to hear what you have to say on it. So that's something that I've noticed as well, is, is try not to take ownership over this feeling like it's a part of you that can never be removed because then it's never gonna be removed. If it's like, this is my anxiety, this is my depression, okay, well, it's yours, what can we do about it? Whereas if I'm just feeling anxious or I'm just feeling depressed today, okay, well, you know, that's an emotion that you're feeling today, not something that, is, that, you've, that you're holding onto in your life. I think that's important. So the next thing that I want to say, and this is probably going to be more 
relevant to people dealing with anxiety and that is that kind of coupling this with the previous point is that are you do you have anxiety or are you just feeling anxious because it's not the same thing right or what you're saying isn't the same thing but the feeling may be exactly the same because there's nothing wrong with feeling anxious i feel anxious you know and i'm a pretty confident guy but there are absolutely things in my life that i do that make me feel anxious before i do them you know and i don't and sometimes i don't want to do them because i feel anxious but i wouldn't say that i have anxiety as a result of that i'm just feeling anxious like it's it's a it's a it's a challenging situation that you might be looking at you know people who say they have social anxiety okay so you feel anxious in social settings you know you're you're thinking about what other people might be thinking about you whilst you're there in this in this social environment okay so if we were to help this person remove their social anxiety from their life what would that look like well it would look like them feeling comfortable being in a social environment knowing that other people may or may not have thoughts about them that may or may not be good that's it that's that's basically it so if you could just walk into a social environment and be content within yourself and be aware of the fact that to be honest no one really probably really cares or is even thinking about you at all but even if they were and even if what they were thinking you know wasn't positive who cares that's that's what it would look like to not feel social anxiety right so in order to get to that place what do we have to do well we've got to help build that person's confidence within themselves because if you if you have the confidence within yourself within yourself that allows you to feel okay knowing that someone else maybe has a negative opinion of you then you're not going to care if someone has a negative opinion of you even in a social en- environment you know if you have if you have decoupled your need for people to like you from your ability to feel good in the moment then again you're not going to feel anxious in that environment because you're okay with people liking you or not liking you so what and so i think with anxiety it's perhaps it's a a fear that we have created maybe early in life like we've had it maybe forever right a fear that we've created early in life and we never faced it or no one encouraged us to face it like once again you know if you're a man watching this right now you're a father and you notice your kid consistently shying away from something in their life especially if it's something important like maybe being physically active or you know making friends anything like that don't leave that that is so bad if you allow your child to never face that fear and build their confidence in this area of their life because that's what that is going to become a an anxiety provoking situation for the rest of their life if you never help them overcome that situation right now in the earliest stages where they're still able to learn that hey it's totally okay if this person doesn't want to be my friend or it's totally okay if i'm not the fastest person in my class or the strongest person in my class right now you know get on those things as early as possible if you're a father please for the love of god recognize that like watch your kids interact with other kids and and with their space and if you notice that they're fearful of of something that especially something that's important that they shouldn't be fearful of then get on that straight away that's so important so i i really think that the only way if you have anxiety the only way you're going to ever remove that from your life is to face the, the thing that you're anxious about and that's going to be a journey in and of itself because there's going to be underlying reasons why maybe you're socially anxious you know maybe you were bullied in school um and or maybe you do have a problem with self-worth because of something that happened in the past and you again you've got to d- be willing to dig deep and find out well what is the root cause of this issue and 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 why is it bubbling to the surface in my life in the way that it is and if you want to never feel like that again like if you like if you have if you have social anxiety for example 
Imagine if you could just walk into any room with any number of people in it and feel completely fine and not be worried about who this person is, who that person is, what that guy's thinking. You know, imagine if you could do that. That would be amazing, right? That would change your life because you'd go to those places and you'd meet those people and you'd have interesting conversations and maybe you'd find the love of your life. You know, maybe you'd find your next best friend. Maybe you'd find a connection that helps you change your life moving forwards. But none of those things are happening for you because your anxiety is controlling your decision to put yourself in those situations. And it doesn't have to. You just gotta be willing to face it. And that's not easy, I'm not minimizing it. I'm saying that if you want it to not be a problem in your life anymore, you have to address the situation that's causing it. Now the next thing I wanna say is and definitely not everyone. This is not something that everyone does, but I do think this happens, and I think that we've got to be really honest with ourselves, and that's gonna to be tough, because this is, again, this is probably the touchiest subject within this subject, and that is never to use your depression or anxiety as an excuse. Now, I wanna define what I mean by that, because I'm willing to accept that there are days where your depression and anxiety is so bad that you genuinely cannot do anything. Like, I'm willing to accept that, and I'm sure there are days like that. Personally, I've not had that experience, but I'm, I'm not out here telling anyone else that that's not something that they might have gone through before. If you've gone through that, I, I believe you. All I'm saying is that there are days like that, and then maybe there are days where you could, you could push yourself. You could do that thing that might be scary if you're anxious, or you could do that thing that is, you know, something that you don't want to do if, even if you're feeling depressed. You could do it, but it's all too easy to say, sorry, I'm just feeling too depressed today, or sorry, I'm just feeling too anxious today. And it's so, oh man, it's so important, not just for the other people, but for yourself that you never use it as an excuse. And you know the difference, I don't know the difference, and that's what makes it hard. Like it's, it, like it's, I, it's what really is tough about um, anxiety and depression, especially in our current modern day society surrounding it, is it's, it's really rude to call someone out on whether they're actually anx anxious or depressed. It's really rude to do that, obviously, and, and very offensive, um, and you don't actually know. Like you don't know if you're calling that person out saying, well, I don't think you're, I don't think you're depressed. I think you could do that if you wanted to and you're just saying you're depressed. It's really rude to say something like that, right? And, and you know, very offensive. So, and, and like, I, I get why that's the case because it would be horrible to have someone say that to you when you are literally in a place where, you know, you're, you're over it. So I get that. But one of the other issues, the, on the flip side of that, we, we've created a situation where no one can help you. No one can help you because no one can, can give you that kick up the ass on those days, or it's rude or societally unacceptable to, to say something like that to someone in that situation or who says they're feeling that way. So only you know whether you're using it as an excuse or not. Only you know whether you could actually try a, a bit more. And I'm begging you to not use it as an excuse. Because what you're doing every single time you, if you do use it as an excuse, what you're doing when you use that is you're just making it grow. You're making your depression or anxiety worse. You're reinforcing that as a, as a part of your life and you're teaching yourself that this is your get out of jail free card that nobody can question. You know, it's like, it's like a kid who, who says he's sick and can't go to school. He might not actually be that sick, but he just doesn't want to go to school. His parents let him off this time and now he learns that he can get out of going to school if he says that he's sick. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you're a child if you, if you use your anxiety and depression as an excuse, I'm just, creating those parallels there. You've created an instance where now you've learnt that if you don't want to do something or something makes you feel scared or anxious um, or it's tough, 
and you don't want to do it, even though it would be really good for you, you can just use this, this get out of jail card and no one can say anything and therefore nothing gets done and you stay exactly in the same place dealing with exactly the same problem. So only you know, no one can really call you out on it because it's, it's, it's seen as such a bad thing to do that these days. But you're just digging your own hole deeper every single time you do that, if you do that. I'm not saying that everyone who has anxiety and depression does that. I'm just saying that if you do, because I'm, I'm sure some people do, right? If you do, then it's making your experience of life worse. It's only going to reinforce this problem that you're dealing with. And, and I want to see you be better. I want to see you have an amazing life. I don't want to, I don't want you to be depressed or anxious. Hell no. I, I want you to, and if you're a father, I, I want you to be a great, a great role model um, for your family. I want you to set an amazing example. And you can't do that if you're feeling depressed and anxious and, and if we're not changing that. So that's another thing. Please, please never use it as an excuse. Now, the last thing I would say uh, and we've touched on this a bunch already. The last thing I want to say, like, if you if you want to fix this, you have to find the root cause of the issue. There's just no other way around it. And that and finding that root cause is probably going to be really, really painful. You know, you're going to have to dig deep, pull back layers of stuff that you probably don't want to talk about that makes you feel embarrassed and makes you feel upset and reminds you that, you know, certain areas of your life really aren't going very well. Um, or you've missed out on some things that that you should have gotten as a child, let's say, you know, had a bad experience with a parent or something like that, and it sucks, like it's not fair. You know, it, it, you didn't deserve it, but this is the situation you're in, and this is the life that you've got, and it's your decision if you wanna make the most of it. And there are people out there that can help you do that, um, but you've gotta be willing to go through that painful, challenging, difficult situation in order to get better, and not just be better for yourself, but be better for everyone around you who relies on you for something in their life, you know, especially if you're a parent, this is so goddamn important. Um, you must be willing to find that, that issue, otherwise it's always gonna be a problem and nobody can do anything for you unless you're willing to go to that place. So I guess off the back of that, the, the other thing I would add there is talk. You know, be as open as you're willing to be with people that you trust and love and know care for you. That would be, you know, a, a massive thing as well. Because if you're suffering on your own, um, if you're suffering on your own, then yeah, no one knows. No one can help you out. No one can do anything for you because they're unaware of what's happening inside of your own mind. And look, you know, fortunately, I have never lost a friend to suicide, but I know a lot of guys in my group have lost friends, have lost cousins, have lost brothers to suicide, it's absolutely horrendous because they could be here today. They could be here happy, living a good life today and they've chosen otherwise because of, because of the weight of what they were experiencing. So absolutely talk. There are people out there who are willing to help, who are willing to listen, you know, friends, family members. If you don't have those people, there's hotlines for this. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll actually add those hotlines into the description down below if you don't know them. Um, you know, join a, join a community, join a group, people who are like-minded and want to be better as well. And, and just being in an environment like that is going to really assist in, in helping you, helping you recognize that it's possible because you're watching other guys improve their own mental state. And also, um, to, you know, I think social interaction, having friends, Hopefully it's a group that does something active and that way also act activity and movement is a huge, probably the best antidepressant, way better than any of those pills that, that you might be using right now. Um, yeah, that would be one last thing. Actually, one more thing I would add as well, and this is an important piece, is that we're not always going to be happy. I think in society today, we set a way too high expectation of how happy we should be. You, none of us are gonna be happy all the time. It's literally not possible. Like, chemically within our brain, it's not possible. We're not set up to be happy. Happiness is a fleeting thing and, and, and something we should appreciate when we have it, but not expect it to stay around. 
You know, so there's nothing wrong with not being happy because we're going to suffer. It's an it's a integral part of, of being alive on this planet is we're going to suffer and there's nothing we can do about it. Like, don't get me wrong, we can do things to reduce our suffering and that's exactly what we should be doing. That's kind of what a lot of the advice that I've spoken about in this episode is about, is reducing the unnecessary suffering. You know, something might be going really badly in your life and it's causing you some situational depression. But if you then layer on alcoholism on top of that crappy situation, you've taken something that was bad and you've made it 10 times worse through your choices. So we can reduce our suffering, we can never get rid of it completely though. We're gonna suffer, but we can get rid of unnecessary suffering. And so I don't believe that happiness is, is a goal really. You know, it's something that happens to us sometimes you know and, and the more frequently that is the case amazing but it's not something that i would necessarily build any expectations around so then what should you build your expectations around well for me personally if i'm gonna suffer and i know i will then i want to suffer for a good reason that's it i want to i want there to be some meaning to my suffering you know, if I'm working a job that I bloody hate, then I want there to be an underlying reason why I'm doing that every day, a reason that I care about deeply. So that at least when I'm in that crappy job that pisses me off, I can think about why I'm there and what it's really doing for me and the other people in my life. So I don't think that we can, we can expect to be happy or plan to be happy, but I think one thing we can do to overcome all of this, to overcome anxiety, to overcome depression, is to have meaning in our lives. Find out something that we really care about, and to have something, or to have some routine in our life where we consistently work towards that end, whatever it might be. You know, and that way, at least when you suffer, and when something doesn't go your way, and when you have a down day, you can always think about why. You can always think about the underlying reason, what you're really working towards and why the suffering is worth it. So um, with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. You know, I hope that you know, if you do have anxiety or depression, I hope it didn't upset you. Definitely wasn't my intention. I just really would love to see you have a great life. And if there's anything you think I could add to this or anything you'd like to help me understand better, comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you did like the episode, please give it a like. If um, you would like to share this with a friend or a family member that you think this would really help, then mate, I'd love for you to share it. I'd love for you to get the word out. Uh, I think that this is something that if we work together as a community, we can absolutely have a positive impact on people's mental health. And then last but not least, you know, if you really enjoyed this episode, once again, subscribe to the channel and make sure that you click that notification bell so that you can see the next episode come up when it's out as well. All right, with that said, have an amazing day. I look forward to speaking to you again on the next episode. Cheers. Hey, mate, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. If you did, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could leave us a five-star review because that's going to help us get our message in front of more men who need to hear it. Now, if you have some feedback for me, I'd love to hear that too. Comment down below. And if you just need some mini doses of Unbreakable Man motivation throughout your week, then you can follow us across all social platforms. On Facebook, it's Unbreakable Man Challenge. On Instagram, it's Unbreakable Man underscore challenge. And on TikTok and YouTube, it's just Unbreakable Man. Your support would be absolutely invaluable. Now, last but not least, do not forget, men aren't born, they're built.